Hello there, welcome back to the Wild Blue Wanderers channel. Last month I installed the Kenwood DNR 1008 RVS navigation radio slash Garmin navigation system into my Dynamax motorhome. Um, I saw a lot of questions on some of the forums and different things asking about how they fit, what they looked like and wanting some pictures and some different things. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a quick review or overview, if you will, on the unit um, and uh, show you what I did. So here we go. So previously this unit had the DNX 89055, also by Kenwood. That unit didn't have any built-in navigation. It did, however, have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Because it was a Kenwood unit and things really, Kenwood hasn't changed a whole lot over the years, all the connections were the same. Um, it was easy to install. The mounting was identical. So um, how this mounts is the screen is actually attached to the double DIN head unit. So if I pull this screen forward, you can look behind there. That's just the standard double DIN head unit and it mounts exactly like the other one did. The same mounting hardware, same wiring, same everything. And then this screen just bolts on with, I think it's like six screws that holds it in place. The screen is adjustable up and down. It also has a bracket to move it out or in. Right now, this screen is mounted in the highest position. Um, it gives me access to my brake knob. I can also see over it very easily to see my regular rear view camera from the driver's position. So this is the main home screen Kenwood system. You've got your regular Garmin navigation in the background. This shows the audio that you're listening to. This is actually on Sirius XM. I don't have a subscription to it, so it's just on the preview channel. It would also show if you're on Apple CarPlay, um, say you're using Pandora or or one of those, it would show that up here. Or if you're just on the regular radio, it would show that information up here. It also has different widgets that you can put over here by clicking the little four button here in the corner. You can choose whether it's a clock, whether it's your camera system. So it'll show that's my rear camera or I can click on the button and it'll show my dash camera um, or just uh, equalizer bars. That's the widgets you have available. I don't know if there's more to come later, but that's, that's the widgets that are available for now. So if we go to, if I just touch the screen here, it'll take me to the actual Garmin. And this is just like a, a standalone Garmin unit. You can go back click the back barrel, go to your settings. This will allow you to set up an RV profile. So I right now my, I'm in an RV profile. I can click on it. I can click on my active profile. It allows me to name it, tell you what my width, my overall length, whoops, went too fast. Overall length, height, gross weight, um, weight per axle if you know them, number of trailers, and then also what audible cautions or advisories and if you want it to tell you if no trucks are allowed. Um, so those are all the setups you can set up in your profile profile settings. Once you have that set up, you can go to this screen, you can click where to, and you can either add a net type, just type a full address in there and it normally will find it, or you can click the address button and you can put your city, state, all that information in, or you can click on any of the categories. So we've got RV parks and it'll show the RV parks in the area. Now, if you want to search in a specific area, you've got a button up here that says searching near. You can click on that searching near and you can tell it you want it to search where I am right now, my active route, my destination, a different city, a recent destination, or some saved place. These two will only be active if you have a route programmed. One of the downfalls is that it doesn't have an option to use voice to program it. It would be really nice if it had, if it would have a little microphone button and you could push on it and be able to um, give your address or say your destination. 
using your voice rather than having to type all of the information in. I know that Garmin's capable of that because a lot of the standalone units have voice options like that, but this one does not. One thing that is nice, however, is you can actually type information in while you're driving down the road. I think it might give you a little warning, but you still can type things while you're driving down the road. I don't typically type while I'm driving down the road, but the nice thing is Ashley can actually reach up and type in an address or put in something if she wants to while we're going down the road. So that, that, that part of it is nice that you can do that. One of the other downfalls is it doesn't necessarily give you the best routes, in my opinion. I mean, it gives you an option of uh, set your, you know, what, how you want your calculation, whether you want it on shortest distance or faster time. Um, but I didn't notice a huge difference with that. You can also add custom avoidance, avoidances. So if you want a, a specific road you don't want it to go down or a certain area, you can, you can add that. It also gives you the choice to say you want to avoid highways or tolls or ferries or unpaved roads. So you can you can choose those things to avoid that type of situation. However, sometimes I don't think it gives you the best route. I actually chose a route from my home and it was gonna take me about 60 miles out of the way. And I know for a fact there's no bridges, there's no um, height restrictions or anything in the, in the route that I normally take. So what you have to do is when you go to your where to, you put in your destination of where you're going, then you go then you go back to where to again and you can add a second destination as a via point somewhere in between so a lot of times what ashley and i'll do is we will look at the route where the direction it's taking us and we will look at apple maps or google maps and choose a few towns that we want it to take us through on the way there and use those as via point it'll route us the direction we want to go so it also has a wireless apple carplay so this isn't actually connected to it but you can use it wired also and sometimes i found that the wired a little bit uh, faster um, but i like the wireless also so we can go to apple carplay and this works just like any apple carplay you got your your, you know, I use Waze a lot, so you got Waze, or you can use the Apple Maps or Google Maps. Um, they're all there. Just like regular Apple CarPlay, if you use Apple CarPlay, it's the same as that. I'm not sure how Android Auto works. I've heard a couple different rumors that it doesn't work the same as other places, but I don't know. I don't have Android Auto, so I've never used it, but I know that Apple CarPlay works exactly as it would in any other vehicle. One thing to note is that this unit will only allow you to have one active navigation routing going at a time. If I have it set programmed to, to Waze, then that's the only active navigation that I can have going. If I click the navigation button here, it will take me back to whichever navigation is currently active. So if I'm using the Garmin mapping and I actually have a route planned in Garmin, whenever I hit the navigation button, it would bring me back to the Garmin routing. If I'm actively using Waze and that route is in Waze and I hit the navigation button, it will take me to Waze. Regardless of which navigation you're using, you'll still get the Garmin notifications. Um, what will happen is the unit will ding and it'll pop up across the Garmin navigation screen across the top, either in yellow or red, uh, depending on what it is, telling you that you have sharp curves ahead, you have a steep downhill coming, um, a potential bridge weight limit that you might exceed or a height limit that you might exceed. Those will all pop up on the screen here and the unit will ding, it'll pop up and then it'll also show a little icon in the corner here showing you how close you are to that hazard. Now, if you're over on the Waze screen, it won't show on the screen, but if you're paying attention, you'll hear it ding, click on the map, and you'll see the notification on the top of the screen and it telling you how far away it is. We found the easiest for me was that I would program my destination on the Garmin, and then I would actually have Waze running at the same time, so I could watch Waze, because I like to hear the Waze warnings when it says there's construction ahead or there's police reported or vehicle stopped or whatever, Waze will pop that up on the screen and then I can just click back and forth between navigation and then back over to Waze and I, it's a quick one easy button back and forth. While I'm on Waze, I can still hear the navigation side telling me that I have a turn in two miles or whatever notification it sends me. So I like, I like that's the system that I've found that 
I think we like the best so far. So one issue that I found is even when I had the old head unit in that just used Apple CarPlay, all of a sudden it would bounce me off the road and say that I was, instead of here, I was driving on the side road or if I was going down the interstate, it would show me on an off ramp. And what I found out was that the GPS antenna was buried down inside the dash, so it was not very accurate. So I actually took that antenna and I moved it up and put it in the windshield. And by putting it in the windshield, it's better. It wasn't perfect. It would still show me off the road occasionally. I actually switched the GPS antenna out with new one that came with this unit. They looked identical. I didn't see any difference and actually they worked the same. So I didn't notice any difference. I've actually purchased an extension cable and I'm gonna to try to take that antenna and I'm gonna move it all the way up to the roof and set it up on the roof next to where the Sirius XM antenna is and run the wires down to it. Hopefully it'll get a better view of the sky and it'll be a little bit more accurate. So this unit also has cameras. If you press the home, uh, let's see, no, you press the navigation button, it'll bring up, you hold the navigation, it'll bring up your camera's modes. So I have the Kenwood dash camera and that records anytime the vehicle's running, it records in one minute increments. And then if there is an accident or something, it will it will record and, and lock that unit in. There's also a button on it that you can push to either take a picture or to save a recording. Um, unfortunately, it's way up on the on the windshield up there. It's hard to reach from the driver's seat, so I don't use that very often. It'll also record parking incidents if the if it gets hit while it's parked or if something bumps the camera, like when we put these windscreens in, it will actually record and say that there was something happened while you were parking. So the other thing I did is on for a rear camera, initially our regular rear view camera, it has wired up one camera that looks straight back. That's just looking at our garage door, so you probably can't see much, but that's looking straight back at our garage door. And then it has one camera that points down looking at the hitch. It also has a camera that looks to the left of down the side and to the right down the side. Um, so you can, you can change cameras by you pushing buttons on the head unit to look at the different cameras. The way the head unit was set up is whenever you would put it in reverse, it would show this, this view of just the, the, the hitch. But sometimes when I was backing into places, I wanted to see that view also. So you could actually do a split screen, but it was a little bit more of a, of a pain. So what I've done is I actually disconnected the wires that goes to this unit just for the rear view camera that looks down. And I bought an adapter. I'll put a link down below to the app adapter I bought and I hooked it into the Kenwood system. So now when I put it in review, reverse, this this view pops up, this view stays the same so I can see everything behind me and see straight down. It just works better for us and that's the way I like it. So that's, that's the way it's set up right now. So that's just a quick overview of the system and the way I have it set up. Um, if you have any questions or if you'd like me to go into any more detail on how things work, uh, feel free to leave me a comment. Tell me what you want to see. I'd be happy to walk through some more settings or or how to program stuff um, the best of my knowledge. Um, so leave me a comment. If you want to know more information, I'd be happy to share that with you. Um, and please, um, if you got anything out of this video, give us that thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. So have a great day. Music